guys, so today I'm going to be trying to answer one key question that I've been thinking about for a while. Is any of the content that YouTube bloggers make now actually authentic? Is their opinion still valuable? Is anything they create something other than an ad? Beauty bloggers use their collective power and sometimes even individual power to determine the success of a product based on a tiny sample in one video. This power is channeled through the influencer effect, so called by journalists and marketing professionals, and it seems to be something that they're simultaneously in awe of and annoyed by. David Moth from e Consultancy thinks that the idea of a YouTuber becoming so successful that they're a celebrity to their audience is ridiculous. But I don't think so. From my perspective, YouTubers are no different to TV producers, writers and presenters in the amount of effort that they put in, the time, the commitment and creativity. So what's so different about them? I think the part that makes regulatory bodies and journalists uneasy, especially regulatory bodies like the Federal Trade Commission in America is that the use of native advertising is absolutely prolific and they don't know how to mediate it. These YouTubers are making a lot of money, especially through multi-channel agencies which make deals for them with big brands. And before you say that there are heaps of videos that are clearly not sponsored and are somewhat authentic from these big YouTubers, then you should probably look a little bit closer. Have a look at the link in the description to Shameless Maya's video on how YouTubers make money. The biggest part that I was surprised about were the affiliate links. And this seems to be the big part where sponsorship deals are not disclosed and they're making money off the links without any of their young viewers understanding this. And where we have to question every piece of content that goes on the internet, especially on YouTube and especially in the beauty of blogging sphere. Take for example Fleur de Force's two main channels, Fleur de Force and Fleur de Boc. One of her latest main channel videos, named New in Beauty May 2015, has a spoken disclaimer where she says that although she was sent a lot of the products that she's reviewing in the video, she wasn't paid to actually talk about it. In this case, she's making the distinction between her authentic content and her advertising. But can we really make this distinction? Saying something like that has a clear disregard for the influence that she's going to have on her audience based on what she says about the products. It gets even more complicated when we look at this particular video in the context of her wider audience and her other channels. In the new Beauty May 2015 video, Flo raves about a Ciate product that she was sent. Now this is where it gets a little bit interesting. Recently, Fleur travelled to the Coachella Music Festival, paid for, I assume, by Ciate. And yet nowhere in the new Beauty May 2015 video does she actually disclose this. So does it make her video advertising nonetheless? Just because beauty bloggers are declaring sponsorships or product deals that they've been involved in, doesn't necessarily mean that it doesn't have the same effect on her audience as an advertising would. And in this case, it's probably worse because the advertisement has more of an effect on the audience because of the lack of declared sponsorship. If anything, it is worse because we now live in a place where even though we know their opinions are influenced by brands and sponsorship deals, we still trust their opinion. Whether consciously or subconsciously, YouTubers are always creating marketing. Beauty bloggers stimulate and satisfy specific parts of the Levesian Steiner marketing theory where we look at the hierarchy of advertising effects. Number one, they stimulate awareness and liking or preference for the product, especially different shades or brands and also influence what we don't like. Number two, they create preferences for specific brands that last over time. And number three, and perhaps the most important for the brands, they create conviction and decision to purchase. So let's also look at the definition of advertising. An identified sponsor has paid for any form of non-personal communication about an organization, product, service or idea that has passed through a mass communication channel to reach a broad audience. Does this sound like advertising to you or does it sound like a video blogging video? With the massive audiences that they draw, 
in the millions for people like Soella, Tanya Burr, Fleur de Force and Bessie Button as well. It sounds exactly the same, though it seems like we've come to a clear answer here. Since beauty bloggers, magazines, television and newspapers have all been co-opted by behind the scenes brand deals and native advertising, we really don't have a choice. We are doomed to be part of the marketing cycle, from category need recognition to product choice evaluation and brand purchase intention.